So thank you all for coming here. I see familiar faces here uh, in the uh, in room. But um, I was asked a question just a few minutes ago uh, by a young filmmaker saying, you know, uh, do you talk to this kind of audience? And I was like, uh, no, should I be nervous? <laughs> yeah, so, so well, I am nervous because, uh, you know, the kind of audience I normally talk to are undergraduate students or postgraduate students or industry where I'm trying to say that this is the right tool that we have uh, for a particular problem or solution that, that we want to come up with. Uh, so this is a new audience for me, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, very young filmmakers uh, in, and also very accomplished filmmakers in the audience here. So hopefully you can see the purpose of why we are trying to do this. Uh, and, uh, and, and what I want to do today is just to give you an idea, not to go too much into science, but to give you an overview of what Kurum is all about. So just you have, uh, you know, a basic understanding of where we are coming from. So Kurum was launched about a year, uh, a year ago. Uh, so the announcement was made by the, uh, uh, by the minister uh, for investment of 50 million euros. Now that 50 million euros was made at a time when uh, we weren't exactly in the best economic uh, situation in the country. We are, uh, we are having a slight turnaround. Uh, however, that's uh, in a time of such economic difficulties, this huge investment in a center for medical devices was made. And there was a reason why this investment was made, and I'll hopefully convince you or tell you why, uh, you know, uh, what, what are the rationale for that investment was. Uh, so that, that investment comes with a price, uh, and, and there's a lot at stake for us. Uh, and what is at stake, I'll, I'll come to it later on. We are very well positioned in the medical device sector. You know, uh, I don't know how many of you know this, but uh, Ireland is poised to be the next medical device hub. So if you walk in the streets of Galway, uh, you know, there's 15,000 students uh, who will be on the streets, and there's about 12,000 people who are working in the medical device industry walking in the streets of Galway. Per capita, Galway would have had the highest number of people employed in the medical device industry. If we lose the medical device industry in Galway, we lose our jobs in Galway. So this industry is not only important for, for Galway itself, but also for the nation as such. 7.6% you know, of our exports are based, on, uh, are based on the medical device sector, and that sector has always been stable throughout the economic downturn. That's one sector which has not, has, has not changed. In fact, it's increasing over the years. So it's a very, very important sector for the Irish economy. So there's an economic reason, which I, which I, which I just uh, presented to you. But also, if you look globally, what is our USP, in, uh, USP across the globe in the context of medical device industry? Number one, the industry and academia work very close to each other. We collaborate all the time with industry. You know, our graduates get, you know, all my st students who have graduated have always got jobs right away. You know, the reason is the industry which is present closely as well, and we are the place to hire. So we are, you know, we, uh, so I have always had people coming from overseas saying, do you have any students that we can take? So we are, the message that we don't give out often is how good we are, you know, uh, is in the context of medical device industry training for the graduates as well as the research that we do. Uh, we as academics do a very poor job, as I am doing right now, talking to the bunch of filmmakers, in, 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 uh, in telling our story. We don't. We just do our, we tell our science story through our journals, uh, our publications, but not so much to the wider masses because we are just so focused on what we do on, a, on, a, on, the, on the research question that we have at a molecular level or, uh, or at some sort of a level or engineering level or engineering solutions level. So it's, it's something that, that we need to be out there and say, you know, this is a part of our, you know, the, this industry is very, very important for us. Uh, and, and the industry is not only important in the context of the economy, but also affects our lives. You know, uh, you know, there are other ways for me personally to make more money than I do now, uh, if uh, you know, uh, if I had to, because I, I work 12 hours a day. But I could potentially do something else and make much more money than what I do now. You know, uh, and the reason that that compels me to do what I do is because I do believe that we have uh, we have the tools to make a difference in people's lives. Uh, one of the th one of the issues that's going to come up for us, and uh, you know, Marjorie gave a nice uh, nice intro earlier on, talking about the uh, uh, the aging population that we have. So I'm fortunate enough; I'm, I'm, I'm I'll be turning 50 very soon. Uh, you know, my parents are still alive. I'm grateful for that, and and there are people like me who would have their parents alive. However, 
you know, my mother is, she's about 74 now, but she's, uh, she just went through chemotherapy last year. My dad's uh, just had a couple of bypasses, you know, and, and she's around 80 now. So it's great to have them, but you have, you know, every, uh, as we go older, they are going to have chronic, and this is not only my story, there's all stories across the room, across the globe, they are, you know, that we are dealing with the issue of aging population. Uh, it's great to have them, but we are also having chronic illnesses uh, in, the, in the population itself. And some of those illnesses that you will hear about later on itself. The main chronic burden of chronic illness lies in the area of musculoskeletal disease, which should be back pain or arthritis, uh, heart disease, cardiac failures, and also diabetes. Cancer is also one of them, which is not on the list. But those are three target areas that we as Quorum also feel responsible for uh, coming up with solutions for. Now I will quickly go to the next Alwani. It's not a pretty slide. I'm going to show you the next one, but uh, please bear with me. I won't keep it for a long time. Uh, so. There's a nice story of insulin. Uh, so insulin was discovered in 1920s, where uh, you know it was it was great controls the blood level, blood sugar levels. So it was great. People started taking insulin; they could live longer. You know, however, people living with diabetes, with uh, you know, because of the longevity with insulin they can get, they suffer from other diseases later on, such as amputations and blindness. And we'll talk about blindness later on as well. But these are the things that happen. So one solution makes you prolong life, but then we have other, other issues that come up later on in life. So this is the, this is the conundrum that we are in in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the healthcare. So our vision, what is Kuram's vision? Uh, Kuram's vision is to work with industry and, and regulators to provide very good solutions for this thing. So we are in the business of translation. You know, we are, uh, we are a center based in the university, uh, but we want to create solutions for the population, which can be translated for all of us. Uh, so, you know, so our, our remit is to not only live in a whole cocoon world of a lab, but actually make something and put it out there so that all of us, the whole population, can, uh, can, can, uh, can use it. So that could mean saving a limb by developing a, uh, developing a therapy or making an elect a simple thing like an electrode which will stay in the body for a long time but will not, will not have issues later on. So those are the kind of uh, uh, concepts that we work with. So some of the some of the examples I can give you is you know perhaps we can uh, this is a, a picture of a heart we can think of you know if somebody has a heart attack we can create a new muscle using 3D printing technologies those are the kind of concepts that we are working on in our lab or perhaps looking at the next generation of electrodes which will which will stay in the body and one will never have to remove them they will degrade over a period of time. You know, so they will be just, it, the body will accept the way it is and they will be a part of the body itself and cause, uh, and, 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 and uh, speci specifically in the case of Parkinson's and others, uh, they will be very, very fruitful. This is another example where we are looking at the next generation of electrodes which will, uh, which will be completely encapsulated in the body itself, so which could be composed of cells or of coatings which can, which can really be compatible with the body itself. The body is a very hostile environment, so to understand that hostile environment, you know, we need to look at new ways of talking to the body and that's what we work with. This is an example of uh, uh, Dr. Zugol's lab where he's looking at developing an artificial uh, uh, retina, an artificial cornea as well. So he's developing this in the lab which can be just taken in and put in the body itself. We'll hear about that later on, uh, later on today as well. You know, uh, this is a picture from Nathan Quinlan, Quinlan's lab where he's looking at how the flow goes through the lungs in the, in the body. So in other words, if you have to deliver a drug through, uh, through the lung, how does it flow through and where does it reside is the questions he's asking. So in the context of developing next generation of nebulizers, and there's a big company called Aerogen, which is just across the street, which is, which is gonna use this technology and make it happen and create the next generation of nebulizers for, for this, which will also means creation of jobs for the Irish economy. So, the, so in terms of societal impact, you know, we, you know, I've given you examples how the industry will benefit from the technologies that we have. So industry is actually investing in us, uh, in the center, uh, and we are developing solutions for them. So that's the model that we work with in the research centers. Uh, we will have 500 researchers 
you know, at a, uh, who will be trained by 2021, uh, and they will have entrepreneur skills. They will be, we will be telling them or teaching them uh, how to start a new business, how to come up with. So, you know, you can think about this as a new spin out environment, uh, a new system in which we are not so much dependent on MNCs to come to Ireland, but this is the Irish grown technologies that we will be, uh, that we, and that's one of the biggest impetus in the centers also, how do we make our own technologies come up? Uh, indigenous technologies, and because we can and we should, uh, we are at a stage of uh, of growth where we can make that happen in Ireland. And, and a good example of that is when I moved to Ireland 14 years ago, there were only two spin out medical device companies, uh, and those who be in Galway would know that Mednova and uh, and uh, uh, there was another one called Cardi. There were only two of them. But today we have at least 20 startup medical device companies just around this building. You know, if you just go across the park, there'll be another 10 which are, which are, which are existing. So we are in an environment which is very, very ripe for growth. Uh, and, and, and we are going to enable t uh, that to happen in the next six years. So just to watch our space uh, in, in what's going on. So we have a remit of communicating our science as well, and Claire has sort of elucidated what we are planning to do. Uh, so I'm grateful to this funding for Science Foundation Ireland uh, and, uh, and also happy to collaborate with the Galway Film Center in the context of this project. Thanks. Thanks.